Concorde Aircraft Battery Video Training Series, Conditioning Charge and Deep Discharge Recovery. Welcome back to Concorde's Aircraft Battery Maintenance Video Series. My name is Walter Heine. I am the Director of Sales with Concorde Battery. In this video, our Vice President of Advanced Battery Technology, Dr. Dave Uditakis, will take us through two special charging procedures, the Conditioning Charge Procedure and the Deep Discharge Recovery Procedure. Dave, would you please explain why these special charging procedures are necessary and how they're done? Of course. There are two special charging procedures. One is the conditioning charge and the other is the deep discharge recovery. The conditioning charge is used when a battery does not pass a capacity test using the normal constant potential charge method. It is a low rate constant current charge method. The deep discharge recovery is used when a battery has been deeply discharged. A deeply discharged battery is a battery that has an open circuit voltage below 20 volts for a 24 volt battery or below 10 volts for a 12 volt battery. The deep discharge recovery is also a low rate constant current charge but puts more amp hours back into the battery compared to the conditioning charge. So how do you perform these special charging procedures? The detailed procedures are covered in the testing and fault isolation section of our component maintenance manuals, the CMMs. This CMM is for main aircraft batteries. We have a separate CMM for emergency aircraft batteries. A copy of the CMM is included in the carton along with each new battery. The CMMs are also posted on our website and can be downloaded from there. Before I talk about the charging method themselves, there are some important safety precautions to point out. First, constant current charging should only be done in a well-ventilated area because a significant amount of hydrogen gas may be released from the battery. This is to prevent accumulation of hydrogen gas that would represent an explosion hazard. Second, if the battery becomes hot to the touch, or the surface temperature exceeds 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees C using an infrared thermometer, the current should be stopped to allow the battery to cool down before continuing. Third, the constant current charge will cause the battery voltage to go as high as 34 volts for a 24 volt battery or 17 volts for a 12 volt battery, which could damage electronic circuits connected to the battery bus on an aircraft. Therefore, a constant current charge should not be performed while the battery is installed in an aircraft. And one last thing, a conditioning charge is only necessary if the battery fails the capacity test. It should not be used routinely because it may shorten the battery's life. With these precautions in mind, let me explain the procedure for doing a conditioning charge. Basically, a conditioning charge consists of three steps as illustrated in the flow chart shown on the screen. First, discharge the battery at the C1 rate to the endpoint voltage. Second, charge at constant current rate that is 10% of the battery's rated capacity for 16 hours. For example, if the rated C1 capacity is 42 amp hours, the constant current rate would be 10% of 42 or 4.2 amps. Third and last, allow the battery to cool down for at least eight hours or until the battery is within 18 degrees F or 10 degrees C of the ambient temperature. The process sounds straightforward, but I'm sure there are more details to be explained. Could you please show us how a condition charge is done? Of course. I have a 12 volt battery here that has already been discharged to the endpoint voltage. It did not pass the capacity test, so rather than applying a constant potential charge, I will use a constant current charge to condition the battery. After the battery is conditioned, the capacity test will be repeated. The charging equipment for a constant current charge must meet the requirements in tables 101 or 102 of the CMM. Table 101 is for 12 volt batteries and Table 102 is for 24 volt batteries. As seen in Table 101, the charge current must be 0.1 or 10% times the C1 rating of the battery 
and the voltage output must be at least 17 volts. As seen in table 102 for 24 volt batteries, the charge current must again be 0.1 or 10% times the C1 rating of the battery and the voltage output must be at least 34 volts. For this video, we are using a BC8000 battery charger and capacity tester which works with both 12 volt and 24 volt batteries. We will be testing an RG35 AXC battery. We turn the unit on and set the mode to charge. The number of charge steps is set to 1. The charge time is set to 16 hours or 960 minutes as you see on the screen. The charge voltage is set a little higher than 17 volts. In this case, we set it to 18 volts. For a 24 volt battery, this voltage would be set to 36 volts, which is the maximum output of the BC8000. The charge current is set to 3.3 amps, which is 10% of the battery's rated capacity of 33 amp hours. With these settings in place, we can now start the charge cycle. As you can see, the battery is charging at a voltage a little above 13 volts and a current of 3.3 amps. It is important to remember that the battery will get quite warm and the battery voltage will go up to about 16 to 17 volts. Don't worry, this is what happens when you do a constant current charge. However, if the battery gets too hot, the charge current should be stopped so the battery can cool down as previously discussed. It will take a while for this battery to finish. We'll come back in 24 hours when the 16 hour charge cycle is complete and the battery has cooled down for eight hours. Welcome back. The 16 hour conditioning charge is complete and the battery has cooled down for eight hours. The BC8000 screen shows the results. The screen shows that the battery charged for 960 minutes or 16 hours and is now sitting with an open circuit voltage above 13 volts. The next step for this battery would be to repeat the capacity test to find out if the conditioning charge recovered enough capacity to pass the test. Refer to the video on capacity testing for instructions on doing the capacity test. Thanks, Dave. There is one more point we should mention on this subject. If the battery does require a conditioning charge to pass the capacity test, it changes the interval for subsequent battery testing. Basically, the normal interval is cut in half. For example, if the normal interval is 6 months or 500 flight hours, then the adjusted interval would become 3 months or 250 hours. Good point, Walter. I was going to mention that, but you beat me to it. Now we can move on to the Deep Discharge Recovery Procedure, or DDR for short. As I discussed at the beginning of this video, a deeply discharged battery is a battery that has an open circuit voltage below 20 volts for a 24 volt battery or below 10 volts for a 12 volt battery. The DDR charge is also a low rate constant current charge but puts more amp hours into the battery compared to the conditioning charge. The flow chart shown on the screen shows the basic steps of the DDR charge. The battery is charged at constant current until the voltage reaches a trigger point of 31 volts for a 24 volt battery or 15.5 volts for a 12 volt battery. Once this voltage trigger point is reached, the constant current charge is continued for an additional four hours. The total charge time is typically 18 to 24 hours, which is longer than the conditioning charge. However, if the voltage trigger point is not reached within 24 hours, the charge current should be turned off because this indicates the battery has become unserviceable. Also, if the trigger point is reached within the first two hours and then drops below 31 volts or 15.5 volts for a 12 volt battery, the charge should be continued until the trigger voltage is reached again. Finally, the battery is allowed to cool down for at least eight hours. Now I will demonstrate the DDR charge using the model BC8000. If you do not have a BC8000, it can be a little tricky 
to catch the trigger voltage point and then set a four hour timer to complete the charge. With the BC-8000, the DDR process is already programmed to match our CMM instructions. On the panel, set the AC power switch to the on position. Press the up or down buttons to select the mode and then select deep discharge recovery. Press the up or down buttons to select the battery voltage. 12 volts is selected for this battery. Now use the up or down buttons to select the C1 amp hour rating of the battery. The BC8000 will convert this to a charge current by dividing by 10. So a 33 amp hour battery will be charged at 3.3 amps, just like the conditioning charge. Press the next button to start the DDR charge. At the completion of the DDR charge, the BC8000 will display a summary of the results. On the screen is a picture of the display after the DDR procedure was performed. This display shows that the battery started at 4.6 volts and ended at 16.7 volts. It took 973 minutes or 16.2 hours to reach the trigger voltage of 15.5 volts. After the DDR charge is completed, the next step will be to perform a capacity test. The DDR charge will often recover the battery sufficiently to pass the capacity test, but there is no guarantee. The sooner the DDR charge is done after the battery is deeply discharged, the better the chances are of passing the capacity test. For instructions on doing the capacity test, refer to the separate training video on capacity testing. Great job, Dave. I think you have covered everything regarding the conditioning charge procedure and the deep discharge recovery procedure. Both of these charging methods improve the ability of the battery to pass the capacity test. As we all know, getting more life out of our aircraft batteries is quite important to our customers. It certainly is, Walter. If these instructions are followed, you have the best shot at passing the capacity test and keeping the battery in an airworthy condition for as long as possible. Also, as a reminder, the CMM is the governing document for servicing Concorde aircraft batteries, and this video does not take the place of the CMM. If you have any questions regarding the CMM, please contact Concorde's Customer Service Department. Thank you everyone, and be safe.